It's the most challenging maneuver to teach because there is no checklist, there's no steps, it's just do the thing. There is a definite still right and wrong way. This is what you do if you lose your engine in the downwind. The Power Off 180 is part of your commercial check ride or your CFI check ride, and it simulates what would happen if you lost your engine in the downwind and needed to land on the runway within a certain distance. The Power Off 180 is oftentimes one of the most challenging maneuvers on your commercial check ride. And it's definitely one of the most common failure items. Today, we're gonna to talk about some of the things you should do as you approach this maneuver and some of the things you shouldn't. You'll start the maneuver by flying in the downwind and you'll pull power to idle, A beam a touchdown point, typically the thousand footers. And you're going to make a safe and stable approach coming into the airport and trying to land on that point plus 200 feet. To help demonstrate this maneuver pro appropriately, We've got some footage from a flight with a student where we did a bunch of power off 180s. And then we've also got a model airplane to diagram it for you. As a demonstration of the proper way to do this maneuver, we'd like to have our stable downwind where we turn our base at about a 30 degree angle to the runway. We're gonna start our base turn and come in and start to make our decision as to whether or not we add flaps here or make our turn towards the numbers in order to round off the maneuver. As we come in on our base, we're gonna make that stabilized final making a safe decision at this point of about 200 AGL, whether or not we need to go around or continue the maneuver to safely land. If we can continue the maneuver to safely land, we'll touch down on our touchdown point of typically the thousand footers plus 200 feet and minus zero. All right, so on this first one, uh, it looks like we're starting this turn a little bit later than we would like to. Um, we're coming in, we don't have flaps in yet, We'll kind of give it a second as we as it develops. But we started our base turn at this point, and we're looking like we're gonna be a little bit low. So we start our we round off the turn from base to final. Still no flaps in at this point. Trying to glide it out, extend this glide as long as we possibly can. It's kind of what happens if you overshoot that downwind approach. You can see at this point we're noticing that we look low, we're getting close to those approach lights. And there's probably no way we're going to make it to the thousand feet down the runway. So at this point, we'd make the determination that we're going to go ahead and go around because there's, there's no chance we're going to make this. So we go ahead and add throttle, initiate the go around and climb on out of there, realizing that that was a failed approach. So on this one, we're coming in, uh, we've already got flaps in. We're trying to make a really tight approach here. And this is kind of the ones where you come in way too high. And oftentimes the, the approach on this is you, do, you just wanna slip it down to the runway the whole way, adding full flaps. So we've got most of our flaps out here. Um, this looks like full flaps. Yep, there we go. Um, and we're starting this tight slipping maneuver. You can see banking heavy. There we go, there's the full flaps. Banking heavy, trying to bring it down to the runway really aggressively. And you're, it looks already, from even from this angle, just extremely high. And we're not descending at all. We can't get the plane down. So we, at that point, decide to go around, add full throttle. There's one flap coming out, doing the proper go-around procedure, climbing out at VX. There we go. Second notch of flaps coming out. Flaps 10 now, and then flaps come zero as we climb out. And then on this one, so here's another approach. We're coming in. And this one looks a bit more stable, right? So you got a more stable approach, normal base. There we go, we're wings level in the base even, judging at this point whether or not we think we're gonna make it to the runway. Looks like we don't love it. So we're starting to kind of round it off a little bit as we turn towards final. And on this one, I believe we waited a little too long to add flaps. So we're coming in. We're a little fast at this point, but, we, but we're feeling stable. There goes flaps 10, and then flaps 25. All right, and now flaps 40. So we added them all at once, trying to make it down. We're still a little high, a little fast, but we are stable at the 200 AGL, just a little bit fast. And what you'll notice what happens here, since we didn't make the decision early enough, is we get down into ground effect right at our touchdown point, and then we just float way beyond it. So we're ending up wheels down at the 1500 foot markers rather than the 1000 foot markers where we wanted to be. So on that one, we just needed to bring it down a little bit more, maybe add those flaps a little bit earlier to make that approach stable 
earlier on so we can touch down where we want to be. So those were some examples of what not to do. The first one being what happens when we overextend that downwind and we bring it in and we're just way too low. And the proper decision at that point is don't try and stretch it out. Don't run the risk of being short of the runway. Just go ahead and go around, make that proper ADM decision early on. The second one is that really aggressive, you know, you hit your A-beam point and you just aggressively slip it down to the runway. And on that one, we're way too high. There's no ability for us to make it all the way to the runway and touch down safely um, and stably on our thousand foot markers. So again, made the decision to go around, probably the proper call at that point. Um, and then on the last one, it's a much better approach. It's a little bit more uh, stable as we come in. We've got an actual base turn, an actual final turn that looked pretty good. Uh, the error on that one was adding the flaps a little bit later, not descending quite enough in that base. And so what happens is that we're on a stable approach, but we end up floating way too far just because we carried too much uh, airspeed into that descent. So on this approach, this is maybe the third or fourth attempt that we did, and the student's actually taking this approach. Um, you can see at this point, we're still flying in our downwind. We're getting to about a 30 degree angle to the runway, and we start a nice, stable, normal base turn pretty much headed towards the runway. Um, at this point, he's starting to judge where he thinks he is. Is he high? Is he low? And at this point, it looks like a relatively standard, you know, downwind to base turn. He likes where he's at at this point, and I believe he's about to add a not, or 10 degrees of flaps. There we go, there's 10 degrees of flaps coming in. And he starts to round out the, uh, actually no, he's got a pretty nice square turn from base to final. This looks great, really great approach here. He's a little bit to the left of center line, he brings it back in. There he goes with uh, 25 degrees of flaps. Very stable approach here, he's at about 200 AGL, we're making that stable call out and continuing the approach. And there we go with 40 degrees of flaps. Comes on in, he's a little right of center line, bringing it back over, and really stable touchdown here, right on the thousand footers, really great approach. Flaps come up, do a nice touch and go, and he's on out of there. That was a really, really wonderful approach by that student there. So that was an example of a really great power off 180 by that student there. So he brings it in, it looks like a relatively normal approach. He's got a nice downwind, a nice base, and a nice final. He's adding flaps using his judgment as to where he thinks he is uh, altitude wise. He's got a really stable approach. He brings it in over the runway and touches it down pretty smoothly right on the thousand footers. It's exactly what we're looking for. That stable approach that looks relatively similar to a normal traffic pattern, right? We don't wanna to depart too much from what we know. And so he does a really wonderful job doing that. When you fly your standard traffic pattern to come in for a normal landing or a short field landing or a soft field landing, you're gonna have a normal downwind, a normal base, and a normal final, and you should be stabilized, ready to land safely at about 200 AGL. During your power off 180, that's what you know. You shouldn't be departing and making a crazy approach to, to the runway simply because you've lost power. We're going to try and fly a relatively normal downwind base and final. Now we don't have power anymore to get us to the runway, but we can still make a relatively stable downwind base and final. In a proper approach to this maneuver, we pull our throttle to idle, A beam our touchdown point, and we fly our downwind to about a 30 degree angle to the runway. Traditionally, it's a 45 degree angle when we uh, do a short field or soft field landing, but for this one, since we don't have throttle, we're gonna use about a 30 degree angle. We'll turn our base and then start to make our judgment as to whether or not we want to add flaps, how high we are from the runway, and whether or not we're, we're gonna start turning towards the runway if we're feeling a little bit low. If you're feeling a little bit low, you'll start your turn towards the, towards the runway and make that decision to get onto final and still be able to make that stabilized approach. If you're feeling too high, you're gonna continue extending that base turn until you get to final and can turn in and make a stabilized approach. And the emphasis here is that we're gonna to get to 200 feet AGL approaching the runway, stabilized, and we should know by that point whether or not we're gonna be able to safely land. If we're not, go ahead and go around. If you're too high, go ahead and go around. We would rather you make a stabilized approach and make the decision to go around appropriately
than bring the airplane to the runway in an unsafe manner and risk damage to the aircraft or yourself. The main challenge to, to this maneuver is the fact that you do not have throttle. And so in trying to make it look like a relatively normal approach, sometimes we can overshoot, right? And especially if we have strong winds that are pushing us off the runway, or we're maybe a little bit lower than we want to be, we might have to turn towards the, turn towards the runway a little bit early in order to be able to make it there appropriately. However, even with the, even with making those corrections, we still sometimes will notice on final that we're going to come in short. At that point, make the appropriate decision to go ahead and go around and try the maneuver again. One thing to remember when it comes to this maneuver is that on a commercial check ride or a CFI check ride, this is typically not going to be the first landing that you do. Typically prior to this maneuver, you're going to be able to do your short field landing at whatever airport you've chosen chosen to go to. And so the way that I always recommend it to my students is to use that short field landing as a bit of a dry run, especially if you want to make this approach nice and stable. So for your short field landing, come in and try and make that short field landing without power, right? So approach it from that same mindset. And it gives you the opportunity to see what the winds are like for that day, see where you need to turn that base and turn that final such that you can make that, that proper short field landing within the standards for the check ride. You then, if you're a little long or a little short on the short field landing, you can add throttle and make your adjustments or go around in order to properly complete the short field landing. Then on your next approach into the runway, when you're doing the power off 180, you've already had a shot at it, you've already given it a dry run, and you're gonna be much more likely to make that power off 180 and make the appropriate corrections to have a stabilized approach with ease. To emphasize a few of the common ways that students do this maneuver incorrectly, we I talk about two major areas. One is the approach that's way too high and way too fast, and the second one is the approach that's way too low. So in the first one, a lot of students will approach this maneuver where they need to make it to the runway by any means necessary, and so when they pull that throttle out, they're going to start this heavy slipping maneuver down to the runway, oftentimes adding full flaps. And the problem with this is that we'll be approaching our touchdown point at 85, 90 knots, full flaps, trying to make a safe touchdown, and realistically, that's almost impossible from that point. So if we approach it in this way, with this heavy slipping maneuver coming down towards the runway, your ability to make a stabilized approach, which is part of the ACS standard, is almost impossible. So we have to make our approach a little bit wider and make it look a little bit more like a norm normal traffic pattern. However, sometimes students are gonna make that even a little bit too wide. Than they, than they meant to, right? So if we extend our downwind too far and we cut our base too, too wide, we may run into the problem of being too short for the runway. And if we're too short for the runway, we need to make the appropriate decision to go around early. Now, there's two major things to take away from this. One, most DPEs and examiners would rather you see that decision early on that demonstrates good ADM and they may give you the shot at doing it again. Not always, but they might. The second thing to think about from there is if you appropriately use that dry run beforehand and you do the short field landing as a dry run for your power off 180, you should be able to make the appropriate judgments on that second attempt of the actual power off 180 in order to not be short, in order to turn that base at the appropriate time and turn that final when you need to and safely and smoothly touch down on your thousand footers where you want to. The way that I teach the maneuver personally, well, that they basically have three tools in your pocket, mm -hmm. right? And the three tools in your pocket are the actual maneuver itself, so the actual when you turn base and when you turn final and whatnot, and then you have flaps and a slip. And you should use those interchangeably as you see fit, thinking ahead of where am I gonna be in 20 seconds, right? Um, and you should be looking outside and, and with the, over the course of time, able to make that judgment call having done enough practice runs. And part of that is using the dry run beforehand. The, re the reason I think most people do the like crazy high slipping maneuver where they come down and try and just, you know, slam the plane on the runway um, is that it can be hard to see where you're gonna be in 20 seconds. Basically, if you've done enough landings mm -hmm. where you know how the plane glides and you know you kind of have a general idea of where you're gonna end up in 20 seconds, that judgment call can be a whole lot easier. The reality of this maneuver is that 
judging perfectly when to turn your base and when to turn your final and how far you're gonna glide and where that plane's gonna be in 20 seconds comes with time. But it should be your goal to make that perfect stabilized approach on any Power Off 180 you do.